Can you boost your immune system? It's not a trick question, I promise, but you'd be forgiven for thinking that there was a simple answer. As uh, Herb said, I'm an immunologist, and it's been said that immunology is where intuition goes to die. That's a quote by a microbiologist, by the way, but I think it's important to bear in mind and sort of set the tone for what we're going to discuss today. How many of you found yourself doing this? Perhaps some point over the last two years? Immune boosting is a trending topic, and one that spiked dramatically in the first quarter of 2020. And in that time, we've also seen a dramatic rise in scientific studies looking at the immune system. So to put this into perspective, our conversations, both inside and outside of the scientific arena, are firmly focused on further understanding our immune system so that we can essentially stay well. Perhaps you've heard of greenwashing, where efforts are made to market things as environmentally friendly in, a, in an attempt to sell stuff without actually putting the effort into making the things environmentally friendly. I kind of see immune boosting as the same thing. So I'd like to propose that immune washing is the new greenwashing. If we think about this, you know, there's, um, there's been many uh, attempts at immune boosting over the generations. So from the birth of the snake oil salesman in the 19th century to something as simple as vitamin supplements. And in the 1970s, the renowned chemist and Nobel laureate Linus Pauling had some over-optimistic ideas, um, uh, conclusions that he drew around vitamin C and the common cold, which has led us to the widespread belief that taking large doses of vitamin C will make you invincible to infection. Now, of course, your immune system needs vitamin C like it needs many other nutrients to function properly. But taking massive doses is not going to make you invincible. Although there's a little bit of scientific evidence that taking slightly more upon onset of symptoms may help you recover quicker if you do fall sick with the common cold. And then we have studies that show taking more than you need of certain nutrients can actually end up dialing down some parts of your immune system, opening the door to infection and ill health. And it reminds me of the phrase, the dose makes the poison. It's not just about what we put into our bodies, but sometimes also how much. Some might be good, but more isn't necessarily always better. And so today, with massive scientific and medical advancement, you'd think that immune boosting was a thing of the past. But sadly, it's more present in our culture, in our stores, and in our online shopping baskets than ever before. And then, of course, the pandemic has helped drive us to even more frothy heights of immune-boosting quackery um, than ever before. And on April 24th, 2020, uh, some of you might remember, in the White House press briefing room, the then president, Donald Trump, suggested that we could be injecting disinfectant bleach as a way of treating or preventing the coronavirus. So what is it about immune boosting? I get it, but I think it first requires us to have a better understanding of what our immune system actually is. And this is one of the places where we go wrong. So your immune system is not a binary switch that you can flip on and off when you please, nor is it some kind of magical force that can be supercharged with supplements. It's a complex dance of billions of different bits. There's many different types of cells, there's subtypes of those cells, there's antibodies, there's a huge communication network of things called cytokines, of which there are hundreds. There's organs, there's tissues, and there's microbes. Yes, even those germy microbes that we tend to think of as enemies, are actually a very vital part of our immune defenses. We are an ecosystem that is a host to billions of different microbes that live on us and in us, and they're very much our health allies, helping train and educate our immune system to keep us well. And 
I'd like to propose that our immune system is actually our wellness system, running through every aspect of our physical and mental health. And immune system cells have evolved in this germy world that we live in, and they've evolved tactics to try and kill those germs. And they do that by spewing out toxic components to attack the invaders. But sadly, these also have some unintended consequences on our own delicate cells and tissues, which is why immune responses have to be carefully regulated, balanced, not boosted. And so if we consider our immune system as our wellness system, we start to see that almost every global health concern that we have in today's world. So from allergies, asthma, autoimmune disease, heart disease, which is one of the biggest killers, metabolic imbalances, psychiatric conditions, and even poor mental health. When we start to examine these, we see that the same immune mechanisms that we use to fight germs are present and going awry in these other conditions. So we certainly don't want to be turning on our immune system inadvertently and we need to make sure we have the balance in this wellness system. So if you cannot boost your immune system, what can you do? And the answer is, it depends. So I realize that that might leave some of you a bit unsatisfied. <laughs> How is it that we can put a man on the moon, but you cannot give me a straightforward answer as to how I can boost my immune system. It depends. It depends on your starting point. It depends on your baseline. It depends on your age, your underlying health conditions. It depends on your nutritional status. It depends on your lifestyle and physical activity. It depends on many psychosocial and socioeconomic factors. And ultimately, what science tells us is that your immune system is something that is made, not born. It's shaped by your experiences over time. And it's shaped by things we can control and by things we can't control. So if we start to think about this, I like to think of it as being a bit of a, a cake. There's no point in going in for the expensive sprinkles if you haven't got a good sponge base. And I know a cake analogy is probably not very wellness for the wellness system, but <laughs> we can start to look at the many different things that we can control, like layers of Swiss cheese. I like to think of it as these dials. All of these different dials are feeding into our overall well-being. Nutrition and our gut health these microbes, we have movement, we have sleep and rest, we have stress in our mental well-being, and then we have the environments that we live in. So if we take each of these and kids consider each of them like a layer of Swiss cheese, they're all collectively going to give us the best chance of staying well. So I get it. I get why we're all so concerned with how to boost our immune system. We have stressed out, burnt out colleagues. We have worn out working parents wondering how they're going to get through the latest snot season while the kids are off school with the latest lurgy and they've got to balance the demands of their work. We have a culture of presenteeism that starts when we're in school. You've got to show up on your seat looking dedicated, even though you're unwell. And science actually tells us that this means not only are we less productive, it takes us longer to get well again, but we're inadvertently spreading our germs to all our fellow colleagues and commuters in the same time. So I get it, and I'm wholly sympathetic. And you can see why this creates this climate of honest false dawns and immune-boosting quackery. So if we can't boost our immune system, what can we do? And I love this quote that well-being is not an act, but a habit. If we go to these dials, we can eat in a way habitually 
that nourishes our, our bodies and our gut bugs with all that they need to thrive. Not too few and not too many calories. We can move in a way that, that our bodies need. We can reframe exercise as just movement, and we can move more, and we can move more often, and we can move in lots of different ways, and we can work to maintain muscle mass and mobility so that we can move well into our old age. How many of you stay up late even though you're tired? Sleep is the foundation of our immune system. We can turn off Netflix, and we can go to bed on time, and we can change the narrative so rest is no longer a dirty word in our society. Many of us are inadvertently suppressing our immune system because we're stressed, because we're lonely, because of the epidemic of psych psychosocial issues that is so pervasive in our busy modern lives. And then we have our environment. So often in the biomedical arena, we talk about how genes are loading the gun and the environment's pulling the trigger. But how often do you stop and actually think about the environments that you frequent? How do they make you feel? We have a plethora of scientific data that shows us that getting into green space, connecting with nature, not only is good for our mental well-being, our physical well-being, but it has some specific beneficial mechanisms that enhance how our immune system functions. And if you really want to know the secret sauce to your wellness system, it's to tweak each of these dials with self-compassion. Well-being is not an act, but a habit. Start slow, Start with sustainable changes. Start small. Start with the things you can do on your worst day as well as your best day. How many of us have had those huge ambitions to go to the gym every day, eat well every day, do all the things we know are good for us? But then we fall at the first hurdle. And we start out feeling good about ourselves, but then we don't. And that's never going to be a motivator for change, feeling bad about ourselves. But actually, there are scientific studies showing that being kind to yourself can have measurable changes on the function of your immune system to make it work better. So be kind to yourself, be kind to each other. Take each of these dials and crank them up just a notch or two. Work on one at a time, what's your Achilles heel? And then move on to the next one. Because even we immunologists, we haven't got this complex, crazy immune system all figured out yet. Thank you.